and if rheumatic process involve the endocardium, right, and of course even the endocardium over the valve, so we call this condition rheumatic, yes, endocarditis. Right, and in some patients, out of these three features, out of rheumatic, pericarditis, myocarditis, and endocarditis, one or two components are present. But in some unfortunate patients, all three tissues are involved. If all three tissues are involved, the situation is called pancarditis. Situation is called pancarditis. Pancarditis means that patient has rheumatic pericarditis, patient has rheumatic myocarditis and patient has rheumatic endocarditis. It should be really unfortunate patient. Now, we will discuss rheumatic pericarditis and rheumatic myocarditis and rheumatic endocarditis one by one. First, we will go into detail of what are the problems related with rheumatic pericarditis. When baby develop rheumatic pericarditis, immune system is attacking the pericardial tissue. Of course, it attacks the parietal as well as visceral pericarditis. Now, when pericardium gets inflamed, the capillaries in pericardium develop very high permeability, right? Endothelial cells in the pericardial capillaries shrink too much and pericardial microcirculation develop very large interendothelial gaps. Due to that reason, due to very large interendothelial gaps, what really happens that there's leakage of very large molecules, proteins. The very large molecular proteins are like fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is a protein produced by the liver which is present in circulation in a globular and soluble form. But when fibrinogen shift from the when fibrinogen shift from vascular compartment to the pericardial sac, here fibrinogen polymerizes and convert into fibrin strands. Fibrinogen convert into fibrin strands. And these fibrin strands are present in pericardium. And these fibrin strands which are present in the pericardium, they are like small threads. And uh, these eosinophilic material which accumulate in the pericardium, right, this uh, is called fibrinous pericarditis. Due to accumulation of this, Fibrin deposits, fibrin deposit in pericardial sac, this type of pericarditis is called fibrinous pericarditis, right? Lot of fibrin is deposited in the pericardial sac and we call this pericarditis as fibrinous pericarditis. Fibrinous pericarditis. Remember one thing, fibrinous pericarditis is a feature of any immune mediated pericardial inflammation. Fibrinous pericarditis is feature of any type of immune mediated pericarditis. And of course, rheumatic pericarditis is immune mediated. Now, in fibrinous pericarditis, if, if you open up the pericardium, it gives a very special look. For example, if you open up the two layers of pericardium, then you will find the shreds of shreds of fibrin from both sides, they are like spikes moving to each other. If you remember your childhood that sometimes mom gave you bread and butter and two pieces of bread are having butter in between. And you know children are very happy to separate the bread pieces. And if you separate the bread pieces, you will find that butter is having spikes moving to each other. Due to that reason, uh, because the appearance of this pericardial layers when they are separated the fibrin which is deposited inside it looks like bread and butter that is why some people call it bread and butter pericarditis so some people also call fibrinous pericarditis as bread and butter bread and butter pericarditis now this pericarditis it will produce chest pain pericardial chest pain and this pericardial chest pain is usually central chest pain and the very special feature of this uh, chest pain is that it is sharp pain, it is well localized pain and it is relieved on leaning forward. Please, 
you should know how to differentiate pericardial pain from ischemic heart pain right this is pericardial pain which is sharp ischemic heart pain is dull right and diffuse ischemic heart pain is dull and diffuse and pericardial pain is sharp cutting pain sharp pain right pain is just like compressing pain on the chest but pericardial pain is usually cutting pain ischemic pain is usually not localized and usually it radiates too much pericardial pain is usually more localized and special feature of pericardial pain is that it relieves on leaning leaning or bending forward now i come to the most important point that if you put stethoscope on the pericardium you will find a scratchy sound because when heart is going through systole and diastole inflamed pericardial layers are rubbing against each other because inflamed pericardial areas are rubbing with each other so that will produce a special type of scratchy sound we call it pericardial rub so what you will find there you will find pericardial pain you will find pericardial pain right plus you will have pericardial rub right pericardial rub which is scratchy sound uh, which uh, which is produced due to pericardial layers rubbing against each other now the point which is very important here is that again there are good news even though during the acute carditis pericardial inflammation may produce pain but the good news is that once the fever resolve this fibrin is cut down by the plasmin and all the fibrin fragments are reabsorbed and pericardium does not have any long term complication please remember that whatever the severity of rheumatic pericarditis there is no long term complication related with the rheumatic pericarditis it almost always rather always heals completely right it always heals completely now we come to the second tissue that is rheumatic myocarditis when i talk about rheumatic myocarditis i will love to explain that what is the morphology of immune mediated lesions the classical immune mediated lesions which are specially found in myocardium but they may be found in endocardium and pericardium also those special lesions are called eschoff bodies those special lesions are called eschoff bodies what are eschoff bodies eschoff bodies are very small pinhead inflammatory lesions and these are immune mediated granuloma which are present in myocardial tissue and these granulomas are specially present around the perivascular connective tissue in the myocardium the blood vessels around the blood vessel this connective tissue around that connective tissue or within that connective tissue a shock bodies are formed these are one of the very classical lesions of a shock bodies are very very classical lesions of rheumatic fecarditis right now a shock body what really happen that on the slide you will find that there are some swollen collagenous fibers some swollen collagenous fiber around that you find inflammatory cells like you find there are lymphocytes right and you find some of the plasma cells there you find some of the plasma cells there you find also very few neutrophils but more important is you find a very special type of macrophages there right and these macrophages right they are large and they have very prominent nucleus and in the nucleus they have find special type of ribbon like chromatin ribbon like chromatin let me draw the cell in a large way the special type of macrophage prominent nucleus in the nucleus there is chromatin which is ribbon like and it has small offshoots it looks like a caterpillar so this about that these cells are also called caterpillars